Mr. P's Science and Math Podcasts. For more science and math concepts, search me out on iTunes by typing Papa Podcasts. You can contact me at Mr. P. Lieberman at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. So now, we have this step that we've done in step four. And now the first three terms of this expression is what we know as a perfect square trinomial. So the first three, and that's why we have to always put it maybe in a different color here, plus that value subtracted by that value. And the plus sign has to be always has always has to be done first. Because in order to get this perfect square trinomial, which is a must, this term has is always, will always be a plus in what we call a perfect square trinomial, or sometimes we will refer to it as a PST. Okay? So in a PST, that value has to always be positive. So we, we always do the plus 9, then the minus 9. Step 6. So as we know, we have the perfect square trinomial. Once we have the perfect square trinomial, we are going to factor the perfect square trinomial by square rooting our first term, of our perfect square trinomial and the last term of the perfect square trinomial. Okay, This will form your h value of the vertex as we're going to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to square root x squared, we're going to square root 9, Okay, and what we do is what we end up having is y is equal to 2 and now when we square root this perfect square trinomial we square root the x squared, we get x. We square root this 9, and we get 3. And what this perfect square trinomial is, is a result of a special product, a multiplying binomials, or taking a set of binomials and squaring it. But now we're trying to figure out what the sign is on the inside. So what we do is we look at, within the perfect square trinomial, we have a negative and we have a positive. So a negative and a positive together will form a negative. So if we were to expand x minus 3 squared, we are going to get this perfect square trinomial. Okay? And again, this is what your next step is going to look like. So here's our perfect square trinomial okay, that we've achieved from there. But then, let's not forget we have the minus 9. And let's not forget, of course, this plus 5, which we're going to put off to the side. Step 7. Step 7, just as we did, we've, we've um, factored our perfect square trinomial. And this is one of the most commonly mistaken places that students forget to do. Multiply the A value from outside of the brackets with the minus value from the completed square. And that is this. The two, before we can continue with the rest of this equation, this negative 9 must be multiplied here by the 2. And this is what we're going to get. Okay? As we said, commonly a common step that most forget to do. Okay? And we get the following. Y is equal to 2, x minus 3 squared, minus 8, plus Five. And the plus 5, as we said, we're going to worry about that at the very end. Step 8, simplify the last terms. This will form your k value of the vertex. So when we simplify it, negative 18 plus 5, we get negative 13. And now look at this equation. y is equal to 2x minus 3 squared minus 13. This is now in the form of y is equal to a x minus h squared plus k value. So in other words, what is our vertex? This is our what we call the vertex form. So our vertex from this equation that we've just completed the square is 3 and negative 13. Remember, whatever this value is, we take the reverse. That's our h value. And then, of course, this is our k value. Okay. And there you have completing the squares.